Okay. Hallelujah. You're welcome to my online streaming. God bless you for coming. Just a minute. Aslam sending. Hola, como estas? Say to the problem, you came too late. Tell the sickness, I am born of God. He said he's finished, Lord. Aslem, habla inglés o francés o español. Para que yo sepa, porque voy a hablar en inglés, ¿eh? Ok. I think he's not there. Ok. Aleluya. Please, before we start, let us pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tu voz es hermosa. Muchas gracias, Aslem. Entonces, habla France, eh, España. Ok. Nos vamos a hablar en inglés y después en español. Es lo que nos hacemos siempre aquí. En inglés, de, después hace traducción en un poco de español, porque no mucho, pero poquito. Espero que tú entiendes. Aleluya. Dios bueno es. Dios bueno es, Dios bueno es, bueno es para mí. En inglés de, después hace Dios traducción. Bueno es, Dios bueno es, Dios bueno es, bueno es para mí. Aleluya. Please let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for a wonderful time in your presence today. We bless you, we worship, and we adore you. We give you thanks and praises for a time like this. Please, Spirit, I ask that you give us all trans over. Father, you said in your word at the entrance of your word, give it light and give it understanding to the simple. Lord, we ask for your understanding and for your light to continually shine in our life, O oh God. I pray, O oh Father, that as your word comes today, it will not fall on empty ground, it will not fall on turning ground, it will not so fall on dry ground, but it will fall on God on the fertile ground, that we yield seed and fruit, O oh God, to your people today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you are just coming, please leave a comment so I can know who is online. I can at least 
I appreciate you for coming this evening. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Today I'm going to be talking about a very interesting topic. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to be talking about um, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. It's a very, should I say, very common thing that we, we already know, everybody knows about it. So long as you go to church, so long as you have visited a church, you know about it. Episto muy muy interesante. Si tú eres cristiana, uh, tú has, tienes que ir a una iglesia o alguien se ha invitado a una iglesia. Al final de, de reunión, hay algo que nos decimos es como una bendición. Todos los iglesias nos dice estas palabras. Eh, las gracias de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, el amor de Dios, la comunión del Espíritu Santo, está con todos ustedes. Amén. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. That is what I'm going to be talking about tonight. No? When we go to church, we just, at the end of it all, we just say it and Will go off, but there is more to it than just what we are saying. You know, Sister Bibian, you're welcome. Good to have you online. Um, ask them, you know, parle en français, eh? Pof, le lo siento. Parle, puedes hablar en eh, español y inglés, pero en français, désolé. Yo, moi, no parle pas français, Dis, désolé. Solo en anglais et en espagnol. Pero en, en francés, muy chiquitín. No, 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 no parle pas francés. Désolé. Praise the Lord. So, like I was saying, I'm going to talk about 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. Like, we all, we all know it, we all say it in church. Yes, even the children, if you say, tell the children, say, surely. Everybody will shout, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And I will join the answer of the Lord forever and ever. Say the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, will just rush it and will go. But there is more to it than just what we are saying. And, you know, like Pastor Chris would say, you say, when God is speaking to you, say, is it better for you to listen to what he didn't say in what he said? Hallelujah. And when you are reading the Bible, it should be the same thing. It's better for you to be able to interpret what God is, what God didn't say inside what he's saying. That is what they call study. Praise God. Hallelujah. First, I want us to look at the book of Ephesians. I'm going to be reading the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we should know that grace came by Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace, grace is of Jesus. He's the one. He say, by grace he came. Grace came through Jesus Christ. So it's not it's not of your works, so that any man should boast to say, hey, my grace and grace. No. It is his grace. It is his favor, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. First of all, let us look at the book of Ephesians, like I said before. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Then the next chapter says, say not of work, lest any man should boast. Hallelujah. 
not of works. It is not of work. It's not what you did. It's not what you didn't do. Or it's not what you are going to do. Or it's not what you will do. When, when God decided on his own to say, I want to bring my son Jesus to come and die, he already made an arrangement that this is what he's going to do. He saw where the world was going to. He knew what was going to happen because it's the beginning and the end. So that was why he brought Jesus. And it was that grace of Jesus Christ, his, his death, his burial, his resurrection that brought about his grace. Hallelujah. See, for by grace are you saved. How? Through faith. And it is your faith that will even make you accept that grace. Hallelujah. It's your faith that will make it work for you. Hallelujah. There are grace and there are greater grace. Why did I say that? Like, for example, like if, for example, you want to pass through, um, how do I put it? You want to take a train. Sometimes you might just get there and they tell you the train has moved. Man, you might be complaining. Why did this train move? Why did this bus move? Why did this, this taxi move? But before the, the, the vehicle moves from where it is to the next destination, you will hear that that, that uh, bus or that train, that uh, this thing just had an accident. Ah, you say, thank God for his grace. So his grace saved me. But it was your faith. At first, you didn't see it that way. When somebody is telling you, you have to give your life to Christ. At first, you will not see it that way. But when you decide to say, okay, let me follow it, and you really follow it, you will start enjoying it. Well, there are some things are, that will happen for you that will not happen for others. Not because you are just that too special person, but because of the grace of God that is at work in you. Hallelujah. There are grace and there are greater grace. The more of the word of God you know, the more grace you will enjoy. It is the word of God that you know that increases your grace. Nothing else. It is not magic. The more of his word, say, by grace are you saved, true faith. Hallelujah. If you do not have faith, how will you believe? Were you there when they killed Jesus Christ? Were you there when he was crucified? Were you there when he died and he rose again? And he ascended into heaven? We were not there. But the, this gospel was preached to you and you believed it and you accepted it. Hallelujah. It is faith. It was the spirit of God that interpreted it and melted it into your heart. That is why you were able to accept it. You absorb it. See, tomorrow so many people cannot comprehend it. They still cannot understand. You see, you just want me to accept like that. What kind of... This thing is... A, is they say this person is a religious fanatic. He don't know what he's doing. Or he, she doesn't know what she's doing. I should just accept like that. I should just believe in what I don't see. Hallelujah. It takes the grace of God for you to be able to believe. That is the faith that you activate inside of you that will make you to be able to believe. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at the book of John. Since my Spanish brethren are not here, let me just concentrate on my... I will try to see later so that in case they come later, they will see benefit from it. But first, I'm reading the book of John chapter 1 verse 17. John 1 17. It says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Pain in my back. Praise the Lord. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ came, grace came. Truth came. The truth is his word. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ himself is truth. So whosoever believe on him, believe in the truth. Hallelujah. It's, it's kind of big for some people. For you to be saved, he said, he said, I chose you. You didn't choose me. He chose you. If God wants the whole world to repent at once, he will do it. But he, will give, he gives us the ability to be able to do this thing so that we wouldn't say he forced it on us. Hallelujah. He gives you the ability to accept him to say, he say, he say, I have given, I have placed before you life and death. Choose you these days whom you will serve. He say, as for me and my household, who will serve the Lord. Ask them, muchas gracias. Eh, merci beaucoup. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know how to. I don't know if anybody speaks French. I can help me to. Uh, you, you understand by the Spirit of God. Don't worry. Praise the Lord. He say, first, you must acknowledge the fact that the five senses. Yes. 
the five senses that God gave to us is grace. The five senses to touch, to, to smell, to, how do I put it, to taste, to see, and to be able to, to hear sound is grace. It is grace. First and foremost, acknowledge these five things first. The touch, the sound, the smell, the, the, the taste, what, and the sight. Hallelujah. It's grace. If it is, if it is not grace, how come when a man is blind, his eyes cannot be replaced? These are sensitive parts of your body. Sound, your ear, if it is damaged, they cannot replace another ear for you. They can give you something to feast to it that's like is similar for, to you to be able to hear little. But it cannot be like the natural one that God gives you to be able to hear. You can hear me now, it's an ability. You are, you are hearing me now, I'm hearing uh, everything I'm saying. You are hearing me. Why? Because you have been given the ability to hear. Hear sound. Sound is a gift. If, for example, um, they are playing a music now, and I start dancing, and the music stops all of a sudden, and I'm still dancing, and you come into the room and you see me dancing, I will look abnormal. Just like somebody that fits an earphone on his ears. He alone or she alone is the one hearing the music. When he or she is demonstrating to it, if anybody sees you on the street, they'll look at this. And say, okay, is this one okay? Because you are the only one that is hearing the sound. You are enjoying it. But God gives this ability to each and every one of us to be able to enjoy the sound. First, acknowledge these five senses. Praise the Lord. Let me just try as I can in a little in Spanish. Y gracias a Dios. Estoy hablando sobre segundo Corintios capítulo 13 versículo 14. Y eh, esa eh, palabra en la Biblia lo ha dicho la gracia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. El amor de Dios. La comunión del Espíritu Santo. Está con todos ustedes. Amén. Aleluya. Muchas gracias, Evans. Y yo he explicado, he hecho una poco explicación que eh, la gracia viene cuando Jesucristo se ofrece su vida para todo el mundo. Aleluya. Y, y la Biblia nos ha dicho que la, eh, la, la, que la vida de Dios, eh, de Jesucristo, nos ha dado la verdad y también en gracia. La muerte, la crucificación, ascenso, eh, ascenso eh, en el cielo, todo esto nos ha dado nosotros una, eh, una eh, perfecta imagen que para que Dios lo ha hecho para nosotros. Y con esto nosotros tenemos la gracia. Y lo he explicado también que los cinco sentidos que nosotros tenemos es una gracia de Dios. Para poder oír, para poder tocar de, de olor, para... ¿Cómo lo voy a explicarlo? Para tacto. Eh, thank you, sir. Para la mira con favor. It's good to have you online, sir para eh, la gracia de vista, para poder ver cosas de gusto y de sentido. Estos cinco sentidos que Dios nos ha dado es su gracia, porque hay mucha gente que no puedes oír, hay mucha gente que no puedes ver, hay muchas eh, personas que no puedes hablar. Pero si tú estás hablando, si tú puedes tener una buena vista, aunque tú estás eh, poniendo eh, gafas, pero más o menos tú puedes ver lo que está pasando en el mundo. Eso es gracia del Señor. Y lo he leído el libro de Efesios, capítulo 2, versículo 8 hasta versículo 9. Que estas gracias 
es un regalo de Dios, no es porque nosotros no, no merecemos, no. Eh, Jesucristo nos ha dado esta gracia por su corazón, no es porque nosotros so, se ha trabajado por esas cosas, no es porque nosotros nos ganamos, no, no es porque nosotros no, no ha trabajado por ese eh, favor, por esa gracia, pero Jesucristo nos ha dado, es su regalo en su parte para todo el mundo. Aleluya. <risa> Praise the Lord. Bueno, y la otra libro que yo he, he leído es en Juan, Juan, Juan capítulo 1, versículo 17, que la ley de eh, museos se ha dado en eh, la gente de, de, de Israel, la ley, pero cuando ven, eh, viene eh, Jesucristo, Él eh, nos ha dado gracias y la verdad. Con Él, Jesucristo se ha venido la gracia en la verdad. Para que tú puedas creer en Jesucristo, para que tú puedas creer en lo que ha hecho para nosotros, es fe. Tú misma no se puede hacerlo, pero tú tienes que tener fe en lo que está hablando en la Biblia. Porque hay mucha gente que se dice, mm, yo creo en, en algunas cosas en la Biblia, pero no es todo. No. Si tú crees en alguno, si no crees en la otra, tú eres una, una Tomás. Que no, que no crea que lo que Dios está haciendo. Pero tú tienes que creer en todo. Pero lo que tú tienes que hacer es hacer tu estudio. Lo que siempre lo ha dicho aquí, que tú tienes que hacer tú misma un estudio. Porque con las palabras de Dios que tú tienes, vas a venir más gracia. Su gracia vas a, eh, vas, vas a crecer. Si sí, con la palabra de Dios puedes crecer tu, 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 tu gracia, es como una persona que se ha puesto una semilla en la tierra y tú estás poniendo agua y cada día está haciendo cosas para que se crezca. Así es también tu fe, así es también la palabra de Dios. Tú tienes que poner toda la nutrición que la tienes, que la, que la necesitas para que esa fe pueda crecer. Aleluya. Ok. Haven't said all that. Praise the Lord. I want to talk. I, I, I spoke about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ first. That is what we talk about. And we're still going to talk about the love of God. Our day a day activities is by grace. Yes. 24 hours. For you to pass through that 24 hours. Do you know what it is? If you if you have been walking before, you have to walk for 24 hours. You will know what will, at least what will come out from your body. So even if you are not walking and you are at home, you are still walking. Why? Because your mind is walking, your spirit is walking. For an angel to be walking 24 hours, don't you know what it takes? It is not funny. So while you are at home, you are not walking. Your spirit is walking. Your heart is beating. Your blood is pumping. You eat. You go to the toilet, you do everything that you are doing. That means the engine inside of you is working. So your day-to-day -day activity is by the grace of God. Because you will see fight. You see fight the battles. Apostle Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. That good fight of faith, we keep fighting it every day, 24 hours a day. Even while you are asleep, the battle is still going on. So your day-to-day -day activity is by grace. For you to be able to pass through it from 12 midnight to 12 midnight the other day, it is the grace of God because so many things will come. So many. Some you are not even prepared for it. At times you might start the day so beautiful, so good, and so wonderful, then all of a sudden the thing just hits you once. Bah! You were not expecting it. But you have to be able to fight through it. Our uh, day to day activities. Let us acknowledge the Father. It is by grace. Hallelujah. Some people might say, I don't need grace. I live my day-to-day -day activities because I have everything. Thank you very much. I, ever say, I have everything I need. I don't need to worry myself. I have the money. I have the ability. Why should I need the grace? My dear, it is not your money that is sustaining you. It is not. Thank God, yes, he has made provision for you. Yes, I'm happy for you. But I'm letting you know tonight that it is by grace. Your day-to-day -day activity, it is by the grace of God. 
<laughs> Have you ever seen any man lived, say he's a doctor or he's a scientist or he's a physician, somebody dies and he, he, he breathes in air into that person to say the person should come back alive? No. It takes only the miracles of God. It takes only his grace for somebody to come back to life. You are living, you are enjoying, you are doing everything you are doing. It is by His grace. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <sighs> See, we have been justified, made right by God. How? By His grace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. <laughs> Let me first of all read this John 3 16. And I'm, I'm reading some places in the Bible that is so so common to us. That is everybody knows it. That is what I mean. But it is dangerous when you become too familiar with the word of God and it doesn't make sense to you again because you are now too familiar with it. Say, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only God, that we ever believe in him, not for the world, but I feel like, bruh. Have you ever pondered on that word? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The love of God made him give his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. He didn't send any his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You know, there's a there's a one Bini adage that my husband normally say, "Oh, eh, how does he say this? Oh, we na name you no yegbe tie. Oh, we na. That is, if you are doing anything and you don't have a competitor, that means that thing is not challenging enough. No matter in what what you are into, have a competitor." When you see the person do what you didn't do, the thing will bite you. you. Say, ah, I should have been doing this thing, adding it to my own. And this person just did it. No, no. So that is why you have to strategize. Praise the Lord. That is what God does. The devil will always want to come and fight what God has said. He fights it. Every word of God that you see that is in the Bible, they will fight each and every one of it. Especially the one that God has signed directly. Say, Thus saith the Lord, I am said, you said it. He fights it. Ah, my love, Sister Vivian Ebony. Where have you been? It's good to see you today. Oh. You're welcome. Like, when God said, Go ye into the world and multiply. And replenish the earth. Haven't you noticed the way they fight reproduction in the world that they are right now? They fight it with tooth and nail. They are not the one fighting. They don't even know what they are doing. The devil is using them to fight the word of God. When God said, "Go into the world and multiply, and replenish the earth," didn't He make provision for the people that He was going to replenish? He's the one that created the world. He has provision for every creature that he has made, that he has programmed to even come. The one that has not come, God made provision for them. So if you say, go you into the world, multiply, replenish the earth. So he, that means he made provision for them. So why should some people, some set of people stand up and say, the world is overpopulated. They want to depopulate the earth. Do you think it's normal? It's not normal. The highest sickness, as I can see in the world today, is infertility. 
The devil is fighting. What does he do? He fights the women because he knows that they are the productive machine. He fights them. As he fights them, he will push them to go and do what they are not supposed to do. Those that are not patient enough, they go to, to meet him and say, please, I need a solution from you. And he is glad to give them that solution, but he has a target. After giving them that solution, he knows how to trap them back. I say, I gave you this thing. You must serve me. He said that you serve me or your generation. That is, he will make them make a commitment. He would make them take a covenant and say, swear before this thing that your covenant, your, your, your generations will serve me. The woman out of desperation will say, yes, my generation, my souls, my everything, yes, yes, they will serve me. I'm ready to do anything. Hallelujah. So he will push the man because right now, now the woman is not doing what he, he will push the man and say, Go and do what you're not supposed to do. After you have done it, he will come back and laugh at you again. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he said, For this purpose shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one. The, the thing, that is the way they fight marriages. They don't fight people that are just boyfriend and girlfriend. They don't fight people that are just, you just get pregnant the girl, you give her pregnant and she's, she, she's just giving birth to you and all that. The devil does not fight them. It's not as if he doesn't fight them, but he doesn't concentrate on them as those that say they want to marry. I want to see the way they fight marriages. People marry to them before one more, two more, three more, they break up. It is not because they want to break up. It is not ordinary. Every word that God has spoken, they will fight it to Tanay. Hallelujah. He said in his way, he, he sent his son to the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved because he knew the plans of the devil. He so loved the world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. God so loved the world of men. Hallelujah. He so loved the world of men. Just after creating man, he looked at him and said, breath into him. The Bible, the Bible told us in the book of Genesis, say he breathed into him the breath of life. And man became a living being. That is without the breath of God, man is not, you are not living. Hallelujah. That is why I said it before that. If you are on earth, you are living your daily activity, your daily life, it is by his grace. Because even the air that you breathe is not yours. Can your money buy the air? It cannot. So why tell me that this is your money that is keeping you alive? If the owner comes and takes that hair from you, where will you be able to get it from? Go and buy oxygen. I will see how many oxygen you can buy. Your day-to-day -day activity, it is by the grace of God. Be you Muslim, be you Hindu, be you Arabic, be you whatsoever you want to be. It is the grace of the Almighty God. That is, I know it and I stand by it. Hallelujah. Bible said he bred unto man the bread of life, and man became a living being. Who on earth has been able to create a human? They fight it, they say there's no God does not. As I listened to a debate one day between a psychologist and a, one, an atheist, he said he doesn't believe in God. The man said, If you do not believe in God, then why do you preach in your book you wrote? You, talk, you talk, talked about moral ethics. Why the moral ethics? You don't need it. He said, if, if God does not exist, uh, then why should you talk about moral ethics? The man said, yes, I don't believe in the existence of God. Why? Because uh, I think it's foolish, but I believe in conscience. So I looked at him. I said, this man is foolish. Conscience. Do you know where conscience came from? It is God that gave you conscience. He told Adam and Eve, he said, the day you eat of this fruit, you die. But the devil came, like I said before, to, to challenge one hand. I said, I said, you will not die. You will only know what is good and what is right. What is conscience? Conscience is for you to be able to differentiate what is good and what is right and what is bad. So if you, you say you do not believe in God, but you believe on what God created, you believe on things that hovers around him. It's like the man that says he doesn't believe in a, 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 what do they call it? I remember, I have a son, mind. Praise the Lord. Say, for God so loved the world of men, that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm talking about 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I am elaborating on the love of God. So that when next you go to church and they say, let us share the grace. You will know what you are sharing. You will know what you are saying. You don't just say it and just rush off. No. That is why uh, with all my days of 
walking with God, even if it is three minutes to closing time, I will make sure I enter the house of God. If it is only that word I go there to take, the grace of our Lord. Why? Because I know the implication. I know the weight it carries. I will run there, I will take it. They will say, I, mean, I say, yes, I know I didn't come on time, but I came to take this grace. I will still go there, take the grace, drop my offering, and come out. Why? Because I know the weight of what that word carries. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace came through Jesus Christ. Our day-to-day -day activities is by His grace. Our life today is by His grace. Hallelujah. Truth. You say I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Bible told us, say, truth, grace, and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's, you see, it's not of work so that anyone should boast. No boast. Eh... Uh, I have the grace of God. No, no, don't just try it. You can, you can appreciate it. Yes, yes. The grace of God is working in my life. And also told us that the more of the word of God you know, the more of the grace of God you will enjoy. You will be able to overcome so many things with His grace. Not because you are strongest. Not because you of the work you do. No, it is the grace that is speaking for you. Hallelujah. People might wonder, how, how is this person able to go through it? You are fighting it. You are living it. From the inside, then they look at it from the outside. It looks beautiful, but how many how many people can actually live the life that you are living in the inside? If they come and say, "I like your own, I like everything," as if you say, "Okay, make we exchange now." Then you tell the person a little story and say, "This is how my story is." Are you sure you can cope? Let's see how many people will take your place. Praise the Lord. Then they will tell you, ah, no, no, enjoy your grace. I'm talking about the love of God. Hallelujah. I will read the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 30 to 32. Hey, praise the Lord. Let me explain a little in Spanish. You case my Spanish brethren comes later. Bueno, eh, eh, estoy hablando sobre eh, el amor de Dios. Primero era la gracia del de Señor Jesucristo. Ahora estoy hablando de la, el amor de Dios, el love of God. Y estamos leyendo eh, el libro de Romanos, capítulo 8, versículo 30 hasta versículo 32. Yo estaba explicando a ellos que eh, la, nuestra vida diaria es la gracia de Dios. Que en este mundo que nosotros estamos viviendo ahora, no hay nadie que puedes crear una persona, no hay nadie que puedes dar a una persona vida, que la vida nosotros, que nosotros tenemos hoy es la gracia de Dios. Por ejemplo, si una persona está muriendo en, en el hospital, no hay doctor, no hay eh, enfermera que puedes darle a estas personas el aire para vivir. No, es imposible. Y también lo he dicho a ellos que por ejemplo, eh, las palabras que Dios nos ha dicho en ese mundo es lo que el eh, diablo siempre está peleando con estas palabras para que estas palabras no sean una realización en nuestra vida. Por ejemplo, hay muchas mujeres que están sufriendo infertilidades ahora y es como una enfermedad del diablo para que para capturar la atención de estas mujeres, para que estas mujeres puedan hacer cosas que no es necesario que Dios quiere que lo hace. Está empujando a ellos para tomar decisiones fatales. ¿Por qué? Porque quieres cambiar sus vidas, quieres cambiar sus mentalidades, para que ellas hacen cosas raras y al final se va a hacer una maldición por su generación, por su familia, por sus hijos. Aleluya. Porque lo que nos tenemos que hacer es eh, how do I say acknowledge? Praise God. <laughs> Aleluya. Eh, tener un conocimiento que eh, la vida que nosotros estamos viviendo hoy es por la gracia de Dios. Aleluya. Sí, sí, sí. Cualquier cosa que tú estás haciendo. Y lo he explicado a ellos también que tu dinero, lo que tú tienes, no es con lo que estás viviendo. 
pour que si tu estás enferma y tú vas a afectar los científicos, los de las doctoras y las enfermeras lo han dicho que, oye, lo siento, este es un algo que nosotros no podemos hacer. Nos ha, ha, ha hace todo lo que podemos, pero con eso no puedes hacer nada. ¿Qué vas a hacer tú? Ahora tú vas a tener un reconocimiento que hay un Dios que vive en, en algún sitio. Tú misma vas a reconocerlo. No, no, tú no vas a esperar que otra persona venga y le decirle, oye, tienes que rezar, oye, hay Dios. Tú misma vas a tener un reconocimiento que de verdad, verdad que hay Dios. Aleluya. Ok. Eseas. Ahora nos vamos a leer el libro de Eseas, capítulo 42, versículo 8. Vamos a leer el libro de Isaías. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, lift you high, hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory would I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven image. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Hallelujah. A new thing I'm about to do. That means God communicates to his people, his love. He communicates with his children. When he was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he went to Abraham's house. He was passing by. Abraham was able to... Rec he didn't recognize him from the very beginning, but it's just that Abraham had an accommodating heart. So that was why he said, Ah, please, men, you cannot just pass by, sir, and don't just come to my house. I know that you are coming from a very long distance. Come inside and eat. Let me make food for you. Let my wife cook and all that. He gave them water to wash their feet. He gave them everything. So the wife prepared everything and they ate. He didn't know them before. After they have eaten, it was they, they not sat down. That was when the Lord spoke because he was with two angels and said, Where is your wife Sarah? He said she's inside the hut. He said, By this time, next year, the time of life. See, at the appointed time, the time of life, Sarah, thy wife, shall give birth. Hallelujah. He said it, and Sarah heard it and he laughed. Why? Because she has been. Barren for years. That was what I talked about. Infertility. God has already told Abraham that Sarah, your wife, shall conceive, will give birth to a child for you. But the devil make sure he fought suit and name not to make that word come to pass. That that is his own. When God has spoken a word to you, when God has told you anything, the devil will fight it suit and name to make sure that that word doesn't come to pass. Hallelujah. He will make sure he fight it that that word doesn't come to pass. Praise God. But his love supersedes every other thing. He told Sarah, I said, don't, he said, why did she laugh? Sarah said, no, I didn't laugh. He said, don't worry, even if you laugh. At the appointed time, at the time of life, you will conceive and you will be a child. And you call the child name laughter. Why? Because you laughed. Hallelujah. No matter the situation you are tonight, I'm going to encourage you, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. That God is going to give you cause to laugh. Praise God. If you can make Sarah and Abraham laugh, he's going to give you cause to laugh. He's going to give you a reason to laugh again. You will so laugh that you are crying and you are laughing because you do not understand where it's going to come from. It's going to come from the spirits because it's a deep laugh. Praise God. He said, a new thing, the former things are come to pass. He said, a new thing do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. A new thing God is declaring to you to that, right now as I'm speaking to you. Hallelujah. He said, the former things, they have come to pass. They have come to pass. Praise the Lord. The former things, they have come to pass. They came. Yes, they have already come. Yes. And you have experienced it and you have tasted it and it's <laughs> it tastes raw. He said, but God is telling you tonight that they have come to pass. He said, a new thing do I declare. God is declaring a new thing to you. He said, and before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And that is what God is telling you right now. Right here, right now. A new thing. 
is declaring it to you. A new thing is about to happen. I do not know what it is. I don't want to say what I do not hear or what I don't know of. He said, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Before it happens, God is telling you of them right now. A new thing, he declares. A new thing, he declares it. Hallelujah. He declares it. He said, the former thing, they have come to pass. They have come already and they are passing away. No matter what it is, it has come to pass. When you read your Bible and you came to when you come to a place where you say, and it came to pass. Go to the verse before that verse. Then you will understand what happened before it came to pass. That means there had been a trial, that means there had been a tribulation, there has been a fight, there has been a battle. Before the word of God will not say, and it came to pass. That means it was already there, but it has come to pass. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm speaking to you by the power of the Holy Ghost. That the former things they have come to pass, and the new things I declare to you. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Tonight, as I'm telling you of them, hallelujah. Hold on to it, no matter what it is that you are facing. They have come to pass. They have come to pass. They are strangers. Hallelujah. Even if it's a family member that comes to visit, one day he or she will get her and say, I'm going back to my family. I'm going back home. I'm going back to where I came from. No matter what it is tonight that has come, it has come to pass. Praise the Lord. The love of God, that is what I'm talking about. The love of God. The love of God. Hallelujah. Talking about his love. When you say God himself is love. When you say love, God himself is love. You know, there, are, there are some challenges that face us. We, we now keep wondering, ah, this love, this love, are you sure God really love me? Why would I face this? Why would I do this? When I was talking with my sister yesterday, was it about three days ago? She's not here with me right now. She said, sister, I don't know how I'm going to explain this. See, sometimes I'll just sit down and wonder how people, he said, I said, you don't need to wonder. God created everybody with different capability. And I have said it in one of my messages before. Every electronic device have their memory space. Every electronic device, they have their space. There are some phones you will buy. They have, amen. There are some phones you will buy, they will tell you they have 30 giga. There are some 32. There are some 64 megabytes. There are some telling you buy. Some are 32, some are 30, some are 50, some are 52, depending on the inches. And you don't expect each and every one of them to have the same capability. They cannot have the same weight, even if some are very light, although they are there. They are, their inches are big. But what they carry in the inside is big. Praise the Lord. God created us with different abilities. So that thing, that fight, that battle, that everything, you are able to carry it. And it has come to pass tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. A new thing God is doing in your life tonight. As I declare it to you, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. It's a new thing am I doing in your life. It's a new thing. You see, and it's put forth. You will see it. You will testify of it. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. He told Joshua specifically, say, this day will I begin to magnify you. Hallelujah. You see, and the Lord said unto Joshua, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Hallelujah. This day will the Lord begin to magnify you, you that is under the sound of my voice right now. This day, this day will he begin to magnify you in the sight of all that has mocked you, in the sight of the whole world. <clears throat> That they may know that as he was with the children of Israel, as he was with every one of old, as he was with them that you have seen, I say, God, why, why not my tongue? God, when is going to be my tongue? He says, so I will be with thee. He will even be more with you. Hallelujah. We're talking about the love of God. Hallelujah. God himself is love. God himself is love. When you say love, 
the love of God. God himself is love. I'm not talking about the love that I say, I love you. When it's set, you say, I beg. I think I have, I need, I need my space. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 4. Hallelujah. I'm sorry from verse 4. You see the definition that God gives us about, the Bible gives us about love. In total. Here he talks about charity, he calls it charity. No. He said, Love, let me use the word love suffereth long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love vowed not itself and is not puffed up. Let me change this King James Version. Or better still, compare it. Hallelujah. Dios bueno es. Dios bueno es. Dios bueno es. Bueno es para mí. Dios bueno es. Dios bueno es. Dios bueno es. Bueno es para mí. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Is so good to me. Hallelujah. Primero Corintios capítulo 13 versículo 4. He said, love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Hallelujah. Love never gives up. And his faith, hope, and patience never fail. Love is eternal. There are inspired messages, but they are temporary. There are gifts of speaking in strange tongues, but they will cease. There is knowledge, but it will pass. Every other thing you see will pass. Hallelujah. Speaking in tongues, your knowledge, your wisdom, all these scientists, they think they know too much. All these, they are structure everything that they are creating that they are putting into place now they will all pass away say but this love of god is what will never end love hallelujah thank you sister Bibia. love it will never end and everything that i have just read at now this is what god is love so if you are able to follow all these things that means you love if you say you love God, you should be able to follow all these principles. You see, he's patient and he's kind. He's not jealous or conceited or proud. He's not ill-mannered. Hallelujah. He's not selfish or irritable. That means get irritated. You are able to be here. You are able to, to adjust. You are able to accommodate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Ma. He said, love does not keep a record of wrongs. Ha, ah, you do me this thing. Like, yeah, Namiya, you doesn't keep a record of wrong. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up. And his faith, hope, and patience never fail. His faith, hope, and patience. These three things are inside of love. Faith, hope, and patience. If you love, you will be able to be patient. If you love, you will be able to have faith. If you love, you will be able to have hope. I wonder why some people will say they love. Because of love, the person now watch you, then you will out of depression, you will die. Well, you, well, are you showing sure you that? That is not love. That is not love. That is not what the word of God tells us about love at all. You, that is infatuation. We are obsessed. You cannot just do without these things. It's an addiction, it's an obsession. That is not love. He said, Love, faith, hope, and patience. They never fail, and they are inside of love. You are able to be patient. 
you are able to stay. Hallelujah. Your faith, you hold it. Your hope, you don't throw it away. It can cast not away your confidence which you have in God. See, because it's of great recompense, it's of great reward. That was what we read last week. Hallelujah. You see, there are messages. All this message, even the one that I'm talking about now. This one, this one will fade away. Hey, inspired message, say they will fade. Say, but why? Because it's not, it's not as if they will fade. That is, they are temporary. This for a why? We need it for the now. A time will come when we don't need it. Hallelujah. Because we have gone past the stage. Just like what Apostle Paul said, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I talked like a child. I reasoned like a child. See, but now that I have now become a man, I threw away childishness. A time will come when these messages, we don't need it again because it has been preached unto us. We are supposed to make use of it now. We need it for the now. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about the love of God. He said, even the speaking in tongues, it will pass away. Knowledge. If we pass away those men that think that they know too much, that they are scientists, they know everything. They now they are able to stand and say, God doesn't exist. God does not exist. Who is God? I don't know God. I don't know. Some people don't think they know everything. All of them, they will fade out. But the only thing that will stay is love. Because it is the greatest of all. I'm talking about the love of God. So I'm right now going to talk about the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So you see now that that. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It's not just in that two sentences, that, that, that one minute that you say. It's bigger than that. Praise the Lord. And I'm even compassing it now. I'm pressing it together. Hallelujah. So that we will not stay the whole night here. Fellowship. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. What is your relationship with the Holy Spirit? How do you relate with him? Who is he to you? What does he mean to you? For me, Holy Spirit is my father. He's my friend. I want to pray. First of all, thank you, Holy Spirit. If I, I'm talking about me. I don't know about you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this food. I bless it. Sanctify it. I bless this food to refresh and nourish my system in Jesus' name. Because that was what Jesus Christ told us. He said, I'll go and I will the father, I will tell the father to send another like me, Alos Paracletos, another one exactly like me. The one we have here with us now is the Holy Spirit. So Jesus Christ came, he brought his grace, he brought his truth, he did his work and he left. But while he was there, he said, Don't worry, I'm not just going to leave you empty. I'm not going to leave you like that, childless, uh, like widow, no, like a uh, uh, orphan, no. I'm going to bring another person to you. Person, somebody like me. I lost Paracletus. That is what, when I was doing my studies, that was why when I saw the word, they say, I lost Paracletus. Say, another like me. Praise the Lord. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Fellowship. Communion. Let me break it down for all so that we will know this fellowship. If you are a man or a woman and you are married, that thing that you and your husband does together, is fellowship hallelujah because why fellowship is sharing that's what i would say what connection has light with darkness he said be not unequally yoke together so when you and your husband is yoked together you are communing you are fellowshipping it is a fellowship there was a, a we want a little pastor message that I listen to. He say, when you are having a fellowship with your husband, he say, don't just rush off to share the grace. He say, there is a section for praise and worship. After the praise and worship, you go to the section of, you listen to the message. Listen, see, you listen to the message. <laughs> After listening to the message, you say, take offering. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let it be that you and the fellow the Holy Spirit, you are yoked together. You understand what I mean? You understand? Huh? According to what I say, you, you understand? Hmm? <laughs> Even if you are not married, at least you are a man or a woman, and you have tested what God said, don't taste. It is fellowship. 
the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, a sharing together, a participation from your part and from the part of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. A contribution. Do you know that? Praise the Lord. Excuse me. A contribution. How do I put it? Hallelujah. Uh, normally, when they, they, they want to do something, they want to raise an offering or they will say, let us buy a gift for this person. You say, okay, you bring your own. The other one brings his own. The other one brings his own. That is a contribution. You contribute. I bring my part. You bring your own part. Thank you, Sister Vivian. So that is contribution. So when you are with the Holy Spirit, you should contribute. He contributes to you. You also contribute to the Holy Spirit. Wow, how? By giving him access to you. Uh, many people, there's one song this guy sings. He say, uh, if Belen is sweet woman, you know they get Belen for man. Sometimes Belen is sweet woman, it happen. But there must be an agreement. If the thing not enter the woman, but did you Belen not go come? Even if you enter the woman, decide to say, I will flood this in her, the woman will put it out. Hallelujah. So let the Holy Spirit, let him, how do I, let him come inside of you. Let him pour his fullness inside of you. Allow him, give him time. Let there be a communion, let there be a sharing, an offering, a contribution, a sharing together. Give him time to pour himself inside of you. If he so pour himself, himself inside of you, you will become. How do I? I don't, how do I put it down? How how do you will become? Your thoughts, everything about you, is changed. That means you are missed. When the Bible says, "Be not unequally yoked with an unbeliever," that means there is a, a an infusing in here. Let me use that word. There's an infusing together. When the man comes inside of the woman, he discharges the 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 the, the eggs inside of a woman. The woman allows it, and when the woman allows it to come, they fight. It's not all of them that get to the spot where they are supposed to get to. There is an enzyme inside of the woman. I because sometimes when I'm doing the study, I take my time to watch some videos. There is an enzyme inside of the woman that. Choke the, the seed. As they are going, they fight. As they are going, they fight. The, the enzyme will rise up. It's like a foam. It will rise up inside the woman. It will start choking the eggs. So they will run. They will, they will be running. They will run. The eggs, you see the speed. All of them are running. Why? Because they don't want to get caught on the way. The enzymes of the woman is angry. There, is, there are some that are angry. We take, say, what is this? Because if it stays inside of the woman, it makes the woman big. So if you're the one that is fighting, you say, I don't want to get big. Your, your, your hormones, your enzymes fight more. Hallelujah. So the one that is able to infuse and get to the spot where he's supposed to get to, he infuses him. And once he gets him, pull like this, he hits the door, hits it, pull, pull, pull. Goes inside. When he goes inside, the door will lock. No other one will be able to come in again. There is a jam together. There is an infusion. They become one. Another development happens. So that is how it is with the Holy Spirit. When you allow him to get to the spot where he's supposed to get to, he opens the door and he comes in. There is a journey together of both you and the Holy Spirit. And when the journey comes together, there is another development that takes place inside of you. Hallelujah. You are changed. They say when somebody gets born again, it's not the you that changes, it's your spirit that is changed. That is you allow the spirit of God to infuse inside of you. You become a different person. Hallelujah. I hope I have passed my message. No, so like, like in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse, we say the, the Spirit of God, say some, some, some will say it's a wind. Everybody have their way of seeing it. Hallelujah. Just like everybody have their way of appreciating their wife or their husband. That is how some people appreciate the Holy Spirit. That is how some people see it. It depends on their mindset. It depends on their knowledge. Some saw it as a wind. Some saw it as a dove. And the Bible describes it as the living water. Hallelujah. And the Bible also said it's the Spirit of God. And really, it is the Spirit of God. Because from the very beginning, the Bible said that in, in, the, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was that form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be light. What was the Spirit of God doing upon the water? 
He was there waiting. The Spirit of God hovering around the water. So when Jesus Christ came and he did what he was supposed to say, I will bring another one like me, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I say he will teach you all things. He will take off the Father, take off me and teach you. Praise the Lord. When Jesus Christ was on the earth here, he, he was our advocate. He advocated for us before the Father. He and the Father forgive them for they don't know what they do. He was there. He was standing at the middle man. But he was living. He said, I will bring for you the Holy Spirit. And he actually gave us the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is now our advocate. That is why I said, you should, if you want to talk to your lawyer, if you, even if you lie to the police, lie to everybody, lie to everything around you, the lawyer will tell you, say, tell me the truth, how this matter is, so I will know how to handle it. So even if you lie to everybody about your situation, you cannot lie to the Holy Spirit about it because he's your lawyer. He's your advocate. You should be able to tell him the truth the way it is. Hallelujah. He's the one that is here with us. So when you pray, pray in the Holy Spirit, but in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God is one here. By the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know if you are following me. I know, I know you are following me. The Spirit of God will give you understanding. The Holy Spirit is a person. Hallelujah. If he can be grieved, that means he has emotion. Hallelujah. Let us look at the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Ephesians 4, verse 30. What's my time? It says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. You are sealed to the day of redemption by the Holy Spirit. So you shouldn't grieve the Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit with your attitude. Hallelujah. Do not blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can get angry. He can be blasphemed against. Hallelujah. He, if, if it's somebody that can be blasphemed against, if it is a wind, how can you blaspheme against the wind? Or how can you blaspheme against a dove? No. Hallelujah. It's the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ said, I will send another like me. Another like me. Yes, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit is, I, I wrote down here, when you say, when Jesus Christ will say, another like me. And when, when the Bible will say, Allos Paracletos, you see, what this Allos Paracletos stands for, there are synonyms that follows it. Number one, you say the advocate, the comforter, counselor, teacher, helper, standby, strengthener, and our intercessor. Hallelujah. There's a place where the Bible says, it say, for you know not how you ought to pray. Say, but the Spirit of God helped our infirmity by making intercession for us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 26. He said, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Our intercessor. Hallelujah. He is our advocate. He is our standby. And he is our strengthener. Praise God. I don't know. This is my Spanish brother. I not whether I should translate a little in Spanish. Um, where do I start from now? Bueno, I was talking about the Spirit Santo. The communion of the Spirit Santo is with us. It is here with us. The ultima version. Aleluya. Lo he explicado que el Espíritu Santo es una persona que tú tienes que, que darle el Espíritu Santo en espacio en tu vida. Y lo he explicado a ellos también que, por ejemplo, una mujer y su pareja o su esposa, mejor. 
se, por ejemplo, si está haciendo cosas de, 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 de marido y mujer, hay un acuerdo entre ellos, hay una participación, hay y, comunión entre ellos. Y tú me das, yo te doy, entre eh, el hombre y la mujer. Eso tienes que ser también entre eh, los hijos de, de Dios. Cuando tú estás con el Espíritu Santo, tienes que, que darle espacio en tu vida para participar, para eh, vivir completamente adentro de ti, porque, porque necesita estar contigo para siempre. Por ejemplo, si tú, 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 tú quieres hacer algo y tú tienes el Espíritu Santo, te puedes dar, darle el directivo, porque cuando Dios estaba dejando este mundo, lo, lo ha, ha dicho eh, su discípulo, que eh, yo me voy, pero voy a mandar otra, eh, mi, eh, mi padre va a mandar otra persona igual como yo. Esa persona va a hablar con, eh, sobre el padre hacia ti y vas a decir todas las cosas que lo sabe sobre el padre. Vas a ser tu, tu entrenador, vas a ser eh, tu, tu ayudante, vas a ser tu abogada, eh, vas a estar a, a, ahí contigo para siempre lo que necesitas pero si tú no tú no tú no lo dejas que se vive en, en ti si tú no lo dale un espacio para vivir en, en, dentro de ti en tu vida en tus cosas diarias en tu vida diaria cómo vas a participar cómo vas a hacer esa cosa vas a ser difícil es por ejemplo si una, una, una bebé está llorando y tú dale su mano así y quiere coger el bebé y el bebé lo ha dicho no 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 está llorando llorando y quiere necesita a su madre o su padre y si no lo deja su mano para que tú, tú lo coges tú no puedes hacer nada aunque tú tú sientes cariño para, para esta niña que tú tienes eh, tú tienes un, un sentido que esta eh, niño necesitas cariño necesitas algo pero tú no puedes hacer nada por estas niños porque estas niños no, no lo vas a dejar para que tú haces nada está llorando porque necesitas otra persona eso es también es un ejemplo entre eh, los humanos y eh, Espíritu Santo. Si tú nos dejas su mano abierto para que él se coja, no puedes cogértelo. Tienes que darle tiempo, tienes que darle espacio en tu vida, en todo lo que tienes que ser ti. Abre tu, boca, eh, tu, tu vida, abre tu corazón para él, para vivir adentro de ti. Deja que hay una eh, infusión. Por ejemplo, si tú quieres hacer té, Tú tienes que coger esta té y ponerlo eh, adentro de agua caliente o como tú quieras. Pero si tú pones esta té en esa agua, vas a eh, caer eh, el, el sabor, el gusto, todos eh, eh, de, de este té adentro de este agua para que tú puedas eh, sentirlo, para que tú puedas eh, beberlo. Es así también eh, contigo y el Espíritu Santo. Tú tienes que dejarlo. Hay que ser una infusión entre tú y el Espíritu Santo, porque Él, tú lo necesitas y Él también lo necesitas a ti. Los dos tienes que, que trabajar junto como un equipo. Uh -huh. Como un equipo, porque si no es un equipo, no puedes trabajar junto. Tienes que ser un equipo, tienes que trabajar en equipo, tienes que ser juntos. Tienes que tener un acuerdo entre tú y Él. Así vosotros dos podéis trabajar juntos. Aleluya. Praise the Lord. Aleluya. I hope I have been able to explain a bit. It's my paper. Why are you falling down? Praise the Lord. So, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever. Some people will say, and the sweet fellowship, there's something like sweet fellowship, it's fellowship. <laughs> they just want to make it sweet and yet, they just say it for saying sake. So from today, please, when you are sharing the grace, have this mindset, you know, like when I was talking about um, the the, the power of praise. I told us that praise God with understanding. 
And it is also good to study the word of God with understanding. It's not just holy praises. Everything that has to do with God, we must do it with understanding. Yes, it is understanding matters. Like I said from the very beginning, that um, when you are reading the Bible, try and meditate on what God didn't say inside what he said. That is trying to read the mind of God. Hallelujah. He said, Christ has been made unto us wisdom. We have the wisdom of God. We have the wisdom to be able to interpret the word of God. He said, study to show thyself approved unto God. And work more than needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. Study. It is from studying you will be able to, to see beyond what is written in the written pages. Praise the Lord. And sometimes you might just be reading the Bible, reading it from the front page like this. And it's, very, it's a very interesting storybook that you are reading like people said, but it's more than a storybook. Hallelujah. When you read it with understanding, you will find out that it's not just a storybook. It goes way back beyond. Beyond our understanding. The life we are living today is this life, this life is deep, deeper than we talk and we think that we see. But with the word of God, we will be able to overcome. You know, there are some things that come across your way. You try and phantom it. But instead of you fighting it, trying to phantom it, you take it to God in prayer. That is what I believe. And when you pray, one thing about God, He speaks to us. He will open your eyes to see them. Open your ear to hear them. He will use everything around you to teach you. Praise the Lord. So no matter what it is right now that you are facing, that you are going through, and dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I'd like to encourage you once more that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship the communion, the sharing, the participation of the Holy Spirit built you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For as many that are going to come across this video, we are going to pray for our salvation. Those that are hearing me right now, they might be Christians. I know that people are going to come across this video. Some day, somewhere, sometime, and they are going to need the prayer of salvation. You know, anything we are doing in this life, we have to look at the future. It's not the now that matters. You might be doing it now, it looks meaningless. But a time is coming when it will be meaningful. Hola, Teresa, bienvenido. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> You know, no matter what you are doing right now, it might look meaningless. It might seem as if it's not making any sense. It is making a lot of sense. A time is coming when that thing will begin to uh, make sense, begin to evaporate. When when God was telling Joshua, I say, this day will I begin to magnify you before all men, so that they will know that as I was with Moses, so I am being with you. Joshua never knew that all those small, small workers that he was going with, Joseph and um, Moses, that, that, that he would bring result like this. But he did it with all his heart. So whatever you are doing today, do it with all your heart. At times you don't even feel like doing it, but go ahead and do it. There are times I don't feel like coming out to even say, I want to do my program. But I still have to do it. Hallelujah. But it is what I love doing. I love doing it. I'm not doing it for people to say they won't appraise me. I'm doing it because it's what I was asked to do. Praise the Lord. So whatsoever you are doing today, hold on to it. A time is coming that the result is going to come. It is not the day you plant a seed that you start eating it. When a chick gives back to a, a lay a, an egg, you don't eat that egg that very day and expect it to be a full-blown chicken. No. Unless you want to eat it as an egg. 
And when you are eating that egg, you are eating the full generation. <laughs> yes, because if you allow it to hash, it will give birth to other chickens. So every day we eat egg. We are eating a lot of chickens generation. We don't know, but God gave it to us to eat, Sha. So we are not guilty. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, like I said before, whatever you are doing, good old. If you are doing bad, you see you are doing bad. So continue. The future will tell. You must definitely report it soon. I was gone on the days when the father will eat fruits and the children will start feeding the bitterness in their mouth. The evil that men do lives with them in the now. It doesn't wait for the future. So whatsoever you are doing, keep doing it. As I have declared from the very beginning, God said he's doing a new thing. He said he's doing a new thing now. He said, and he will speak forth. He said, you will see it. Say the old ones, they have come to pass. They came to pass. Someone will encourage us to lie. Whatsoever it is, it has come to pass. As I'm encouraging you, I'm, I'm encouraging myself also that it came to pass. It didn't come to stay. Because me, I don't have a house. I don't have a space for anything that God has not assigned, that God has not proposed for my life to come and stay. It has come to pass. It's a stranger. And it, it has come to pass and it has passed away. Because God has told me, say, say behold, I do a new thing. Like we read in the book of Isaiah. I say, I'm doing a new thing now. And then it spring forth. He said, you will see it. He said, and before it happens, he said, I declare it to you. So tonight I'm declaring it to you by the power of the Holy Ghost that we have just spoken about. Hallelujah. And it will definitely come. That new thing. Praise the Lord. Keep doing what you are doing. Keep doing your best. Keep putting your best into it. You might look as if it doesn't make sense. It makes a lot of sense. You might look as if it's meaningless. It doesn't. It, no, no, no. Big pastors that we are seeing today, when they started, when you go and look at their video, you will laugh and say, ah, this one will be like this. When I started my video, it was dark and people were saying, Samila, we don't see your face, we don't see your face, we don't see your face. My sister, it was a sister of mine that said, Sister Amelia, I want you to change the lights. She said, okay, take this one, go and buy another light, change the lights. I want to be seeing your bright face. I want to see your beautiful face. Actually, she did, and I changed the light, I changed everything, and I believe my picture is beautiful now. But sometimes when I look at those old messages, I will look at it, I will laugh because it means I was coming from somewhere. A time will come when people will look at that message that it will change their life, but they will not be looking at the picture. It is the words that they will be hearing. They will say, wow, ah, so this person was doing this video like this, and this, everyone was like this, and she was able to hold on like this. That is how your story will be also. You might be doing it now, it looks dark, it doesn't look bright, it doesn't look beautiful. For the time will come that people will appreciate that dark parts, that darkest moment of your life. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them which are called according to his purpose. For those who don't love God, I don't know about them. I only know about those that God said, For them that love God. Hallelujah. Excuse me. So, Sister Teresa, I know you slept off. Of Sleeping Beauty. Thank you for coming on time. We are about rounding up now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I want us to say the salvation of prayer for as many that know that they are not born again. Because there was a place we read in the Bible just I said, For God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John 3 17. He sent his son into the world so that we might be saved. He didn't send his son to condemn us. Some people will say, why God will tell us, say, whosoever believe, I don't want to believe, you can't condemn me. Why God be like that? He's giving you an option. <laughs> Even God is saying, choose you. He's not forcing you. He's only telling you what's attached to it. He said, I place before you life and death. He now said, choose life that you might live. Don't you see that he's a, he's a very generous God? If you want to tell you, say, come on, repent, we'll push you or repent over us. Who are you to say no? <laughs> you say you want to say no, we take the hair that you are breathing, all your shakara, your gra gra gra, we end. If you want to look at the life of a human, just go and take a look for any video where they say how they, how they preserve dead bodies. Because there are some videos that I watch 
Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. That's good. That's good. Thumbs up for that. That's good. Keep it up. There are some videos that I watch when I'm doing my studies sometimes. Only me, I'll start wondering. Just go and look for it. Say how they preserve human body. We look at the human body. That is it, it, it's so it's so that is I don't know how to put it. It's, it's, oh god, it's so uncalled for. It just it's like a robot, it's like a plastic. They will the way they will be throwing it, bra, bra, bra. I'll be wondering, I say, ah ah. And when this person was alive, that person would be saying, hey, do you know me? Do you know me? Eh? You know my ass? You know my account? <laughs> that doesn't tell me because useless. It's of no use. Because the certificate that was given to you to live on earth has expired. We are the children of God. We are the ones that are privileged to renew our certificates. We get ability to renew. Ezekiah turned to the wall and said, Father, the dead, only the, the dead cannot praise you, only the living that will praise you. Me, I don't want to die because I still want to praise you. God has already said you will die. He said, No, 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 you know, if you take my certificate, I need renewal. He enter office, commissariat of the Almighty God. They put another stamp for her, they renew her for her. We, the children of God, we. <laughs> hey, oh God, praise the Lord. So please. If you know you're not born again, please do me this favor. You're going to say this salvation prayer with me. It's going to help us. I know that people that are with me online, that they are, they are, they are Christians, they are born again. But we are going to say this prayer together for those that are going to come across this video. And the Spirit of God will minister to them. You say, for by faith are you saved. You and I that are saved today, it is by faith, like I said from the very beginning. We were not there when the, the whole thing happened. But we were preached to the gospel too. We believe it by faith. But we accepted it. And we are following it. He said the things of God is like it's foolishness unto men. When you tell some people, they say, that one is foolishness. I can can you say it like that? Which one is? I'll just give my life. And some people are afraid of the rules and regulations that follows it because it, it, the things of God is a kingdom. And every kingdom has their principle. Let me not go into that. That is a topic. The whole topic for another day, and that topic, I think, <laughs> every time I take my pen and start writing on it, it's so large, so big, I, I don't even think I can talk about it for three sections. Praise the Lord. So let us pray for our brothers and sisters that are going to give their life to Christ. Right? Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you, we bless you for tonight. Father, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Forgive me all my sins. As I forgive all who sin against me, I confess with my mouth your Lordship over my life. And I accept you with my heart as I believe that you died for me on the cross and rose again on the third day. From today, be the Lord, Savior, and Master of my life. Hallelujah. I am born again. Praise the Lord. Congratulations, you have just said that prayer. You are welcome to the kingdom of God where everything is possible. Praise the Lord, whatever that is good. Thank you so much for being there for me. You are awesome. You are one in a trillion. Sister Teresa, thank you for coming online. And for those that have been with me online since, I appreciate you. For those that just come and do a sneak peek like this, sites for you know it they are off i also thank you for coming i love you all so much although my spanish brother didn't come today oh my god what's happening let us pray i don't know but my phone is still showing here maybe it's your tablet praise god 
Well, let us pray so we can round up this meeting. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your name for a wonderful time like this in your presence. We thank you for your word has come and light has come. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. And we thank you for the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, O oh God, for your utterance, O oh sweet Spirit of God. In your name alone be praised forevermore. I pray for us many under the sound of my voice. I ask that your grace be increased in their life. That your love never depart from their abode. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with them, O oh God, all the days of their life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I pray for your people tonight. I ask, O oh God, that you meet them at the point of their need. Father, your word has come that you are doing a new thing. That the old has come to pass. Father, we stand upon your word which never fades. That new thing that you have there said, oh God, that you are doing in our life, oh God, oh, we accept it, we receive it, and we hold it as ours. And we lambano it tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, we receive our daily benefit of today in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be your holy name. Father, let your will be done. Let your name alone be praised in the life of your people. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Gracias, Señor. Nos doy gracias por todo lo que tú estás haciendo en nuestra vida. Nos doy gracias por tu gracia, por tu amor, y por tu comunión en nuestra vida. Nos rezamos hoy que tú estarás con nosotros para siempre en el poder del Espíritu Santo en nombre de Jesús Amen Praise the Lord Ok, we have come to today's final Until I come your way next time I remain your friend your fan your sister your everything I love you Mm-hmm. Ciao. <laughs>